Okay, at 1020, around 1020 this morning, we received calls of black smoke uh, coming from the area just behind us here. Uh, we received, started to receive other calls, and uh, what happened was there was a small aircraft that was flying over, and uh, it crashed. At some point during the crash, it hit a power pole or tower, uh, causing it to fall over. And so the power lines fell into a uh, field of some sort and started a brush fire. Uh, that fire luckily was kind of adjacent to a swampy area, so it didn't really spread. Uh, the impact of the uh, aircraft, the aircraft crashed into a building of townhomes and that structure also caught fire. Um, I don't know if, if the exact, uh, uh, I don't know if that fire is still active. Uh, we have, we'll have uh, Gresham Chief Lewis that will uh, be able to give you guys a, a, a brief briefing on that. So Gresham Fire uh, is the lead agency for the fire. Portland Fire and Rescue also supported them. FAA will be the uh, invest investigating agency on the airplane crash. And that's really all I know at this point. Any fatalities? I don't know. I know that there, there are injuries. I don't know how many, I don't know how severe, and I don't know about fatalities. Do we know how many people were in the plane? We don't. We don't. Well, where it took off from? I don't have that information, and all that information will come from the FAA. Um, we haven't received that information from the FAA. Do you know exactly how many houses, and it's in one building? So it's a building of townhomes. Uh, uh, it, it appears to be multiple units in the townhome, or in the, the building, multiple townhome home units in the building uh, that caught fire. What about the people that have So the area was evacuated. The residents in the adjoining structures were asked to evacuate. Um, we have uh, trauma intervention program volunteers that are here uh, helping those people navigate through uh, being displaced. Um, and I think we're trying to get uh, some emergency services lined up for these people. Do we know how many people might be displaced if you say their home was damaged? I don't have that number. Do you know how many people are without power right now? I don't. Uh, I don't know that number. I know that both PGE and uh, uh, Port in General have, uh, or I should say, I know that Port in General Electric has been uh, notified. Uh, I don't know what their status is on the power. What happens now? What are the next steps for you? So for us, we, MCSO is just here really securing the scene. Uh, it's uh, not a crime scene. Um, we are here to support fire and FAA. Uh, we have detectives here ready to help the FAA when they arrive to uh, investigate uh, this crash. Um, my understanding is that there's uh, a somewhat large debris field and so right now we're collecting um, pieces, parts of the airplane and all those things will be collected for the FAA to investigate. Where is the airplane? Is it? in the field or is it in somebody's house or the airplane landed on or crashed into uh, one of these townhome structures okay so the plane debris is in somebody's house right now. some of it is yes like i said the plane hit a power pole and so the impact of that appears to have uh, caused some of the plane pieces to come off uh, so there's like i said there's really kind of two crash areas, so to speak, and debris kind of uh, all around. And I just want to clarify this, like cluster of townhomes, are they connected or is it like individual townhomes? They're connected. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. And for the people evacuated, are you guys going to help them find support, find somewhere to go, or are they just kind of left to figure it out? Yeah, so the TIP volunteers are here. The TIP volunteers uh, uh, are very well connected to services. Um, we're also working on getting um, uh, emergency services out here, uh, I believe, uh, from either the county or the city. Is FAA, if a, is FAA on its way or is it already on scene? If it's not on its, if it's not here, how long is it gonna take for them to get here? Uh, all very good questions. Uh, they have not communicated any of those things to us at this point. Uh, long shot if you know this or not. Do you know if it, was it taking off or landing from Traildale Airport? That also we don't we don't really know for sure. 
And uh, like I said, the, the FAA would have the flight plan and would know exactly what the uh, intended route of that uh, aircraft was. Long shot, do you have the tail number of the plane by chance? I don't. No. So let me, uh, that's really all I have, which I know isn't much, but it's what it is. I will uh, touch bases with uh, Chief Lewis, and he has indicated that he'd come down and give you guys a, a briefing on the fire. Yeah. And I'm the Grishman Fire Chief. All right, so what's the update on this fire? So about 1021 this morning, uh, had a report of uh, aircraft emergency that was originally came in from the Troutdale Tower, and they reported a column of smoke in this direction west of the airport. Uh, arriving crews found heavy fire involvement in a row of three-story condo units. So we had initially two and then later three and four units involved in the fire. Uh, initial report was possibly a plane crashed into those apartments. We've been able to confirm that that has happened. We've been in touch with uh, NTSB out of their Seattle office and they'll be sending a team to the scene. Our fire investigators are there now. They're working hand in hand with the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office to rope off the area, protect any evidence that may be found. Additionally, we have two transmission lines from Portland General Electric that are down. Uh, nobody has confirmed that they were struck by the aircraft. It's an assumption that's being made. We just don't have that information confirmed yet. Initial report says that there were two occupants on the airplane and we're missing one residential occupant from the condo unit. How long did it take you to get things under control, under contained? The, uh, the fire went to five alarms. So uh, generally speaking, that's uh, each alarm has four engines and a ladder truck. So when we go to five alarms, we're talking almost 20 engines, ladder trucks, five or six chief officers, and a bunch of ancillary equipment, uh, rehab units, and air supply, and those type of things. So um, it's warm today it's not as hot as it's going to be later this afternoon but when you're wearing roughly 75 pounds of uh, fire protective clothing that's made to insulate you from uh, the weather it gets very hot very fast so a lot of the crews we needed were so we could uh, rest and rehab not overheat our firefighters and make sure we have enough resources for them on the scene today. You said four units were impacted by the crash? I may have said four. Initially there was two. It spread to three or four. I think now it's going to displace five families. It may be a sixth one. They're going to look that over, see whether or not they can return to their residence this evening. And injuries. You mentioned that there was two people on the plane and one person may be missing from one of those flights. Outside of that, can you talk about injuries? Uh, two people have been treated by AMR medics. There's two of those on the scene along with an AMR supervisor. Uh, the first one was treated and refused transport. And the second was just being looked at when I walked up here to visit with you, so I don't know the outcome. And how is fighting a plane crash fire from different from a typical fire? Generally a residential fire in a three-story uh, condo unit for us is you go in the front door, you go up the stairs, and you put out the fire wherever it's at. This particular fire was well involved. Uh, there was collapse from the initial airplane strike, so you couldn't get into the units. So a lot of it was uh, the units on the either side. We were able to attack from inside, but the unit where the most impact was was a defensive fire for that unit from outside, overhead water from the ladder truck. Pets, too? No information on pets. I imagine the fuel, too, from the plane also adds fuel. So, when I, by the time I arrived, there didn't look like it was a fuel-fed fire, but certainly on the initial dispatch and the smoke column rising from the, from the unit, it looked like there could have been hydrocarbons involved. Important is it to have support from surrounding departments during situations like this? Well, uh, certainly uh, Gresham is okay for taking care of Gresham for one alarm. Beyond that, we need our uh, our partners. And throughout the region, whether it's uh, Clackamas or Fulton Valley, Portland or Gresham, we use automatic vehicle locator so we get the closest appropriate piece, no matter whose fire it is or where it's located. So there were Portland crews on the initial dispatch. And then by the time we went to the second alarm, we had committed everybody from Gresham, some more from Portland. We have an engine from Vancouver here. I've been with Gresham Fire 22 years now. First time we've had a Grand Vancouver engine into, into one of the cities. Now, it's important to note that we're in the city of Fairview. The Gresham Fire Department provides fire protection through a contract with uh, Fairview. How long did it take you guys to get here today? 
I don't have that information available to me. Uh, engine 74 is right over there, so it's going to have been very long. Uh, do we know where that plane took off from? I do not have that information. Somebody might. I don't know. Is there any sort of warning that uh, this plane was in trouble or any, anything of that nature? The initial report from Troutdale Tower was there was no mayday, no call for emergency. Do we know the make of the plane? We do not. Uh, to my knowledge, we have not found any other victims. And when power lines are hit, how does that change the scenery for you guys as firefighters? Fortunately for us, the lines that may have been hit, the lines that are down, are in a right of way for big transmission lines. So there's not like there's residential or businesses underneath them. Now, it did spark a little bit of a wildfire, some grass fire in that area when they fell, but it wasn't really a big threat to uh, firefighters or the community because that's an isolated area to begin with. And no firefighters were injured at all? No reported firefighter injuries. All right, thanks, Chief.